Edinburgh, the capital of Scotland, is a city of captivating contrasts. Its historical streets, crowned by the iconic castle, wind through the old town, the new town basking in neoclassical elegance. The city's lush parks and gardens provide serene escapes amidst the urban buzz. With a rich cultural heritage and world-famous festivals like the Edinburgh Festival Fringe, this city is a vibrant tapestry of history, art and natural beauty. Edinburgh in the 1980s was a city in flux, forging its path toward modernity while celebrating its rich heritage. The city retained its historic charm and architectural grandeur, but it also witnessed shifts in music, art and social dynamics. The 1980s were marked by an emerging alternative music scene, and many well-known Scottish authors began their careers in this decade. However, it was not without challenges, as the eras saw the closure of traditional industries and a decline in certain neighbourhoods. It was winter of 1986, and 20-year-old music lover Anne Ballantyne was residing in a home in Yemen Place on Dalry Road, having moved out from her family home two years prior. Former Trinity Academy student, Anne was known as a kind-hearted young woman and participated in volunteering, where she engaged in work with disadvantaged and disabled young people at the Canongate Youth Project in the city. It was November of 1986, and Anne had recently ended her relationship with her boyfriend, however she seemed positive and upbeat, with plans made for her to spend Christmas with her family. Anne, who was described as social and vivacious, loved heavy metal music and clubbing, and was excited to attend an Alice Cooper concert later that month. She had many friends, several of whom were in a group of motorcyclists. On the 18th of November, after visiting a friend at Edinburgh Royal Infirmary and going to her parents' house, Anne said goodbye to her mother Isabel, not knowing that this would be the last time they would ever see each other. Isabel and Anne's father, Graham, had become concerned when they did not hear from or see their daughter in the coming days. It was highly unusual for Anne to cease communication, therefore Isabel and Graham went to Anne's residence in the Polworth area of Edinburgh where they posted some notes and money through the letterbox, requesting for her to call them, however she never did. Christmas came and went with no answers for the Valentines, despite Anne having made arrangements to visit her parents on Christmas Eve. On Boxing Day, Graham went to the police station and subsequently filed a missing persons report. The Edinburgh Union Canal is a historic waterway, weaving its way through the heart of the capital city, connecting Edinburgh to Falkirk and the Forth and Clyde Canal. This 32 mile long engineering marvel, originally completed in the early 19th century, was designed to facilitate the transportation of goods and raw materials between cities. Today, the canal serves as a picturesque and tranquil urban watercourse, flanked by scenic paths and greenery, providing an oasis of calm amidst the bustling city. It is a popular destination for walkers, joggers and cyclists, and the canal is often adorned with colourful narrowboats, creating a sense of nostalgia for a bygone era. It would be on the 21st of January 1987 when the thaw came, the decomposing body of Anne Ballantyne was spotted by three men floating in the canal in Fountain Bridge, just yards from her flat. Her naked body was wrapped up in carpet, with her hands and feet bound, and investigators confirmed that she had been sexually assaulted and strangled with a ligature. As per Anne's mother's account, her daughter's body had deteriorated to such an extent that her bodily fluids had already begun to mix with the surrounding water. Graham Ballantyne had taken his vehicle to a local garage that day, where he heard several people discussing the news that a body of a woman had been retrieved from the canal. He returned home to Isabel, until police knocked on the door and told them the devastating news that their daughter had been found. 
Anne was identified from a distinctive scar on her head and dental records. The post-mortem confirmed that Anne had been in the water for a few days. However, she had been murdered several months prior. With this news being spread by the media, locals in Edinburgh feared that there was a serial killer lurking in the shadows of the city, with many horrified that it seemed that Anne's body was stored for some time before the killer disposed of her remains in the Union Canal. Anne's sleeveless leather coat, brass lighter with her initials, two keys plus the keyring and her black handbag were missing. Strangely, when investigators searched her home, it was found that a photo album and a camera had been stolen. Police struggled to solidify a precise timeline to when Anne went missing. However, in the days after last speaking with her mother on the 18th of November 1986, several friends of Anne reported sightings in various locations in Edinburgh. Around the 23rd of November, one of Anne's friends appeared at the doorstep of Isabel and Graham, expressing concern that Anne had not appeared at a pre-arranged meeting. No suspects were publicly named. However, Anne's parents believe that they know the identity of her killer. According to Isabel Ballantyne, the killer attended several family celebrations and special occasions, and was even pictured in photographs with Anne. A suspect was named in police reports, however, there was allegedly not enough evidence to bring forth any charges. Despite the Ballantyne's suspicions, this individual has never been charged and, according to several reports, continues to live in the city. Graham Ballantyne believed that his daughter's killer murdered her in a, quote, jealous rage, and they don't have, quote, the guts to confess. Alan Ballantyne, Anne's brother, stated that not pursuing the suspect and taking them to trial was, quote, like a dagger to the heart. Isabel said of the suspect, quote, I hope he never knows another happy day in his life, because he killed a part of us as well. Speaking to the media, she also stated, quote, Anne kept a diary, and the last comment in it was, There's somebody knocking at my door. I think I recognise the knock. I think it could be XXX. It is unknown who Anne was referring to. Chris Clark, a former detective, put forward a theory in 2019 suggesting that Anne was a victim of serial killer John Taylor, known as the Beast of Bramley. Now in his 60s, Taylor, who was known to frequent Glasgow in 1986, is currently incarcerated for life due to his involvement in the 2000 murder of 16-year-old Leanne Tiernan and a string of sexual assaults. Tragically, Leanne was abducted and killed while returning from a Christmas shopping trip in Leeds. DNA evidence played a pivotal role in Taylor's identification, leading to his guilty plea and subsequent sentencing to two life terms. Taylor is presently detained at HM Prison, Wakefield. According to Clark, he believes the cases are linked through both women's bodies being kept in storage for a time before they were left in the locations they were found in. Anne's brother Alan is unsure of this theory, believing that if that were true, Police Scotland would have likely pursued this line of inquiry already. Cold cases in Scotland do remain open, however, until they are solved. The death of Anne Ballantyne continues to haunt her loved ones, who live every day in the agony of not knowing who took her life and why. Isabel Ballantyne said, quote, It was like living in a nightmare from which we couldn't wake up. We never got to see her one last time, which is a killer. Most people get to see the body or kiss the body if they want to. We never got that chance. The body was so decomposed, we never got to say goodbye. She further commented, There's not a day goes by when I don't think about her and wish she was still here with us. We still hope for justice. 